Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about Stedo, which is uh, an Android debug bridge, which I'll explain what that means in a minute. Uh, my name is Mitchell Henches. I'm actually from Canada, which is a pretty awesome place in my personal uh, opinion. Uh, I'm just Mitch Henches on GitHub, uh, and my website is fuzzlesoft.ca. Uh, I like chickens, that's besides the point. Um, for over a year, I worked as QA, um, testing both uh, an Android mobile app and a website. Um, so that meant that I often had to go into the actual console and see network requests and such like that, um, which was really a breeze in Chrome and Firefox because all the tooling was there. Uh, like the detail and it was just fabulous and it kept evolving every release. It was good times. I mean, even Internet Explorer 8 had tooling built in so you could see details as you were debugging and it was awesome. But meanwhile, with Android, you're dealing with DDMS, which has some good details, but it's a lot more uh, generic. It's nothing you can really drill down app-wise uh, other than the Logcat tool itself, and that made it a little bit obnoxious. And as QA, this confused me, because how come uh, testing the web platform was so much easier? Why aren't they around the same? Like, what's going on? So considering to myself back in the day, 2014, if only there was some way that I could use Android and I could debug it with, I don't know, Chrome or Firefox's tooling. And Stedo exists. So let's get started. I have made a dummy app. Let me just pull it up here once my mouse figures out what's going on. And this app has a list of everyone who works at Threaten37, which is the English way of saying it. Sorry for all the Swedes who have offended. So we got some sick animations, which is fun, and it's got a list of all these people, and it's even got a cool feature where if you tap on people, then it automatically uh, loads their image. So that image is not stored locally, it's gathered off the network each time, no caching or anything for simplicity. So even a little loading animation up at the top, but the internet's so fast here you can hardly see it. Isn't that a, isn't that a plus? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add Stedo to this app. So I'm going to open up Android Studio, which I've thoughtfully kept open. And uh, in our build.gradle file, we're going to add Stedo. So what uh, Gradle is, is, of course, it's your framework for building your Android app. And uh, it's where you need to configure what dependencies you want to be included with your Android app. So if I go to the Stedo website, uh, it's made by Facebook, by the way. They're the cool guys who are behind it. Uh, one guy is Rick Brewster, who I'm a real big fan of because he made Paint.net. So if he's on this project, it's got to be good, my personal opinion. Um, anyway, so we're going to add Stedo to the list of dependencies. How does that sound for fun? Of course, we need to sync those dependencies down from remote. And while that's going, uh, just a little bit of a fun time. Um, so for getting this list of people, I set up a small Python scraper to automatically gather it from your uh, meet page here. So what it would do is it would look at each individual person, grab their photo, it would follow this little email link and it would gather it and then uh, it would all put that together into a nice bundle. So and it would grab everyone which is really convenient. So that's by the way if you're wondering how I scraped all this data it was off this web page. So everyone who's here should be in the app. Anyway, looks like we should be done. Let's give it a compile. Also, just uh, for fun, uh, and we're going to go into this later, notice how we have new awesome ninja on the side here, which is kind of fun, and it's going to work in this presentation later. The script automatically added him as well to that list. So if you scroll to the bottom of everyone here in this app, we're going to notice that, oh no, oh, this is a, this is a fun. I should have reinstalled this app, shouldn't have I? New awesome ninja is at the bottom of that list. So we're going we're gonna to deal with that because that seems like some rogue data which is in there, but we'll get to that in a second. And in the meantime, let's let our recently stethered app install. If you've ever worked with uh, Chrome on Android and you've needed to debug there, you're probably used to the Chrome inspect window where you can see all devices Android device is currently attached to your um, desktop. And then from there, you can inspect in a little window. So once uh, our app 
is fully installed and running, uh, Stetho is actually going to show up as another device in this list, which is convenient. Let's just let Gradle go here. It's a good time. It's like uh, building suspense, because who knows how awesome it's going to be, right? And you don't fully appreciate it unless it takes a couple minutes to build. So this isn't actually Stetho itself. It's just Gradle figuring out the dependencies. But that's OK. By the way, uh, fun tip for you. If your Gradle builds are really slow um, and you're running Gradle before, I think it's something like um, something 0.24, uh, get that updated because um, they've been working on performance releases since then, uh, which has been excellent. Uh, I think that's something like a year ago, and they've just every release since then has always been like a major performance improvements. So if you're having an issue like this and your laptop isn't actually uh, a frying pan, then it will improve your build time significantly. Anyway, let's see, is it done? And it's running. Let that finish there. And I'm just going to keep this open. Ah, yes. So now that it's been added as a dependency, we're also going to manually initialize Stedo. So in your application level for your um, Android application, right there, you can initialize it with um, a static method on the Stedo class. Grab your context with get application context. Give that a quick run, and then away we go. Launching. Since I have live reload here, uh, I'm going to restart the app. <laughs> just, just demo things. I'm not entirely sure why Stether wasn't showing up in the list. And despite the fact I tested this three different times, just got that demo madness. We'll get there. Um, there we go. OK, no, we're killing it. We're back on the roll. So uh, just in this list where your devices are going to be, uh, you can actually see your app hooked up with Stetho, which is in the list. So all the usual suspects for tabs are actually going to show up at the top here which is excellent. Uh, and we're actually going to stop with, or start with the equivalent of the uh, DOM list, which is uh, if you're with HTML, where your DOM would be. So this is literally as full functional as it would be with an actual mobile app. If we click the search icon, we can actually drill down to any individual element, and it'll go down this list for us. We can see when we're looking at an, an element, uh, the styles you have in play, um, not all these tabs are going to work, such as event listeners, but the uh, mostly important ones will, uh, which is incredibly awesome. Um, and we can see in this list, same thing as when you're dealing with a mobile app, as you highlight each element in the actual screen, it will highlight it, which is kind of helpful. Like it's, it's as if it's identical to uh, a mobile app, uh, HTML app, which you're dealing with. And it's kind of fun too, because you can visualize to see what's happening with Android. Say, for example, how Android works is if you're dealing with, say, in this case, we have uh, what's called a, a list view. Um, as you scroll through it, it will reuse elements that it can. So notice we only have about seven or eight of these things, rather than the full list of, what, like 100 people? I'm not sure, but there's a ton. But we don't have a whole list of that. So say, for example, if we look at this layout right here, and we have it selected, as I scroll, we can see it go up and down, which is as the thing does in the actual list which is kind of convenient. You can see literally stuff just going on at the Android level. And additionally, if I look in here, um, I see that there's a nested relative layout, and there's no other elements here. And if you're used to Android development, uh, it's redundant to have a relative layout and a relative layout if there's no other parameters being assigned there. It's, it's no point. Potential performance hit, not too bad, but still, it's bloat. Um, you can't just see this when looking at the screen. Stetho helps you break it down. So we're going to go ahead and fix this. As a developer, I know that the uh, information, the XML for the uh, ninja row is in ninja element.xml. And even my IDE 
can see that this relative layout is redundant. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. We'll give that a run. Let this thing go. And then next thing you know, boom, I'm going to drill down to that element again. And now we're only one layout deep. Cool, we're already fixed some bugs. Thanks, Steto, you've fixed the day. All right, next up, let's look at the uh, network requests because they're really useful. So let's look at uh, Anders here because he's really sick. Hey, Anders, get over here. So I clicked on it, and now I'm seeing the person, but the network request isn't showing up. Oh, no, we got another presentation bug. This is just the worst. No, actually. Uh, Steto is very modular in making sure that you don't have to have a whole uh, packages which you don't need or modules which you don't need. So there's the base Steto module, and in addition to that, there's uh, two separate ones depending on how you're doing your network requests. Say with Java, you might be using the essentially native or low-level Java and be using URL connections, in which case you'd have to manually tell Steto using the URL connection library, intercept your requests and tell Steto about when they start and end. Or optionally, uh, if you're using a uh, very standard library, OKHTTP, OK, two or three, Steto has uh, an interceptor you can just plug in easily. Uh, in the case of this app, uh, I'm using OKHTTP. OK, what a coincidence. It's almost like this is for a presentation. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add the uh, OKHTTP OK, interceptor. Same thing, going to edit your build.gradle. No, 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 no. Same thing, you're going to wait 800 years while it syncs and compiles. And then when it's done that, uh, we're going to add a network interceptor. So there's instructions for that on the site. Down at the bottom, it's going to add network interceptor and create a new Steto interceptor, which is added in that OKHTTP OK Steto module. Dot add network. Perfect. We'll get that running again. This should take a fraction of the time, if I recall correctly, but I also have been fooled before, so we'll let that go. Wow. The speed, I can feel it. We're actually killing it this time. All right. Now, since the dependencies changed, I'm going to need to restart Steto manually here. My live reload isn't going to take care of it for me. Let's get on the side. Now, if I make a network request, it helpfully shows up in the list. Cool. Again, all the usual suspects are there. You can see the details of the uh, response type. Click on it, preview response, see all your headers, which is really convenient. And again, you have details you can't see if you're just running the app normally or looking at DDMS. Say, for example, uh, I can see at a glance this is using HTTP, which if the NSA is watching, they're going to be curious as to why I keep downloading Anders' photo. They might have some questions to ask. So again, as a, I'm, I'm going to want to change this to HTTPS because I really don't want the NSA knowing what, what uh, pictures I'm looking at. Um, I know that's being downloaded in the load image task, which I've set up. And I'm going to look in there. And, ah, here we go. That's where I'm saying use HTTP. Let's add an S, and uh, hopefully that should solve all of our problems. Really throw the NSA off, at least until they've uh, broken this encryption scheme too. All right, let's make another request. Hey, Anders, how's it going? Check that one. Wow, HTTPS, welcome to the future, and privacy, et cetera, et cetera. OK, cool. Now, uh, finally, um, the final tab we're going to look at today is the Resources tab. And this is the most important one to me uh, by far. So uh, with Android, you're probably using uh, the built-in SQLite 3 databases. Uh, and you can drill right into that using the Web SQL view. And you can see everything for every database. You can see all the columns, all the details. But the best part is you can actually run SQL uh, directly in Steto, which is great. Um, say I'm going to select from Ninjas um, where, I don't know, let's say name is Anders. Oh, no, no, no. Where name like Anders. And look at we can just run SQL right there which is extremely convenient. Now, uh, as I alluded to really uh, well and tactfully earlier, uh, we have new awesome ninja down at the bottom. And I don't really want that in my production app. 
So rate in the SQL, we're just going to remove them really slyly. Delete from, remembered from that time, you should be proud of me. Ninjas where name like, let's just say new. And he's gone. Give the app a restart so that it reloads from that database because, of course, that's being kept in memory, the uh, actual view. And we want to reload that. Boop. Check the bottom. No more new Awesome Ninja. Uh, of course, you're going to want to change the source of this data too so that new installs don't have new Awesome Ninja because that would be embarrassing. Um, and away you go. There's some other tabs as well, which we can see in Steto. The most important one to me by far is the console because you got some sick ASCII art. Um, and uh, that, that wraps it up. Big thing, elements. You can see the equivalent of the DOM, networks, see all the requests and their details, and you can see the database details and run SQL right in Steto. That's what it is. Cool. Cool. I have a question. question. Yeah. Yes. All right. No, 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 no. Uh, the most important tab here is profiles. Does it really show the uh, Unfortunately not. Profiles, timeline, audits, uh, these guys, I mean, I haven't gone into them too far, but uh, as far as I know, they aren't working yet as of 1.3.1. Um, and just like how in Elements, some of our things on the side here um, don't really do anything. Say, for example, event listeners, each of these rows have an event listener, but it's not actually going to show up here because not everything has been set up. Yeah. No, but this is all about Java stuff, like all about yeah. XML layouts and stuff like this. Really yeah. awesome tool, uh, and you said it, it's not implemented yet, so may, they might be planning this for future releases. Right? Uh, potentially. Development has slowed down a little bit. The last commit was in February, if I recall correctly, um, but uh, it's still working really well. So. Okay, and uh, since it's a bridge, right, so we have kind of two ends, like front end as a stato, and backend is an Android application, right? Uh, is it possible to have as a backend some iOS application? Uh, with Stedo, no. It is uh, Android only. Because Stedo isn't just for the front end. Stedo interfaces your entire Android app, right? The database is technically back end of your Android app, right? So it sees the Android app, and that's how it communicates back and forth. But it's all in pure Java, so it's not um, platform agnostic. Yeah. Info. Will it appear as a console message? Uh, that's a good question. There's a, uh, in order for the console to actually work, you need to set up Rhino. Let me see if I can, Rhino. You, did I spell that wrong? I can't tell because my entire screen isn't showing up here because Linux. Um, it doesn't work out of the box. You need to have another dependency for it. And I haven't used Rhino. Call me a scrub, but it's true. So um, I'm pretty sure that's just going to show up in Logcat and other fun stuff. Let's actually look at the GitHub page real quick. No, 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 no. There's no direct link, so I'm going to slide through stars. Ah, round two. Um, so it still acts as a JavaScript console. Uh, I don't know all the details there. And I could read to this page to you, but that wouldn't be very good material. So okay. that's all your homework or something. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. But do you know any plans for them to actually JavaScript code in any sense debuggable from the source stuff inside of it? That's a good question. I'm not sure about that. Uh, and that, sorry, I should be repeating these questions. So that was uh, whether or not um, you could use uh, JavaScript, actually debug JavaScript code within Stedo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So do you mean like if there's like a hybrid app? So say you have like Android and a web app on top of that? Do you uh, mean like that? No. OK, and then interface with that with JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. That might be Rhino. Uh, again, I'm not too positive because um, I haven't had to pull into it too much. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe. OK, cool. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question regarding this. Uh, the, the console, the Stedo, yeah. is it written from scratch or is it using some uh, Google console, but with a, with a data, because it, it really looks like. This right here? Yeah, this application. Is it new application, or is it, 
Stedo yeah. itself or just the console? Or like this thing which is appearing on the... Yeah, I mean the, this, this tool. The, this, okay, this, one this is part. Small. This is uh, it's Chrome. So, so it's Chrome, but with a custom, custom bridge. Data. Exactly. The data being sent over is, um, yeah, through this fancy bridge. So uh, my imagining of it is there's uh, a set of public APIs, which the Chrome Inspect uh, window provides. And then there's the default usage, which is, of course, if you're viewing HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you can just view it with that. And then since all the APIs work in their modular, you, um, Stedo has also found the correct way to use it and throw the Android stuff in there as well. So, so basically for iOS, uh, we could it could, It's possible. This. Yes, with iOS you could set it up. Yes. Yes, exactly. Because, because th this, is, this is just Chrome stuff and it's uh, cross-platform, right? It works exactly, everywhere. yeah. And then we can just write backend, Stedo backend for iOS. I understand what you're saying, Neil. Yes, definitely. Uh, it hasn't been written yet, but it's definitely possible to um, make your native iOS app uh, attached to the Chrome Inspect window. And yeah. then in this sense, you could enhance it with some profiling information. And NCIS magic, you could yeah. definitely enhance it. Enhance. Because yeah. uh, uh, in JavaScript world, on the back end of JavaScript, uh, that's how people debug uh, node-based applications. They set up a bridge, a node called, called Node Inspector, and then mm -hmm. fire up this uh, Chrome developer tools and debug it. Oh, really? OK. Awesome. Any other questions? Sounds good. All right, cool. Thank you very much.